For as long as mankind has existed, murder has been committed. Archaeologists are constantly uncovering the remains of victims whose lives were violently ended far back into prehistory. But just how far back can we go? And is it even possible for a Neanderthal to commit murder as we know it? As much as we like to fool ourselves that we live in more enlightened times, much of the evidence shows that human nature has remained a constant throughout the ages. And here we have five ancient murder mysteries that will likely never be solved. Number 5. Shanadar 3 Shanadar Cave in northern Iraq may be the site of the earliest known case of murder. The cave is famous for its Neanderthal remains, and ten skeletons have been found there, dating as far back as over 50,000 years. The skeleton which has since become known as Shanadar 3 is thought to have been a male Neanderthal who met an untimely end at some point in his mid-40s. A puncture wound was found on his ninth rib, which is thought to have been deep enough to have collapsed his lung, resulting in his death. After further analysis of the skeleton, the mystery deepened after it was discovered that the wound did not match the type of injury that would normally be caused by the heavy stabbing spears used by Neanderthals at that time. Instead, it was determined that the damage done to the rib was most likely caused by a lightweight throwing spear, which was exactly the kind of weapon favoured by modern humans during that time frame. The evidence seemed to point towards a modern human being being responsible for the murder of Shanadar III. But what could have caused this fatal encounter? perhaps a territorial dispute, or maybe just an unfortunate misunderstanding. The incident seems to be one of the earliest occurrences of violent death, and also raises the uncomfortable question of whether or not the modern definition of murder would even be applicable when a modern human killed a Neanderthal. Often Neanderthals are portrayed as crude and savage creatures, but the skeletons found in Shanadar Cave seem to challenge this theory. Traces of pollen on the skeleton known as Shanadar IV indicates that Neanderthals may have buried flowers with their dead, and Shanadar I was shown to have extensive damage to his skull, leg and arm, which had healed over time and not caused his eventual death. It's unlikely that he would have survived such terrible injuries without being cared for by other members of his group, which challenges the belief that Neanderthals were solitary beings. So was the murder of Shanadar III a one-off incident, or was violence between modern humans and Neanderthals a regular occurrence? Unfortunately, the vast timeframes involved make this question nearly impossible to answer. Number 4. Clonny Cavern Man Clonny Cavern Man is the name given to the remains of an Iron Age man, which were unearthed by a bog-cutting machine in Ireland in 2003 and are thought to be around 2,300 years old. Analysis of the body revealed a horrific catalogue of injuries, including three blows to the head with an axe which split his skull open, a deep laceration across his nose, and bizarrely his nipples had been cut off. His corpse was then dumped in the peat bog, which had the unintentional side effect of preserving and mummifying the body, due to the bog being highly acidic, cold and low in oxygen, which prevents decomposition. While it's obvious that the man suffered a violent death, the leading theory is that he may have once been a failed king who was richly murdered. His body showed no signs of having led a life of physical labour, which indicates that he would have been a man of wealth, a theory further strengthened by the presence of an exotic hair gel in his hair. The gel contained plant oil mixed with a resin from Spain or southwest France, which would have been expensive and out of reach for most men at that time. However, the strongest indication of his royal blood is the fact that his nipples were cut off. In ancient Ireland, sucking on a king's nipples was a sign of submission to his authority. The removal of a man's nipples would thus make him incapable of kingship in this world and in the afterlife. The fact that Clonny Cavan Man had his nipples removed indicates that he was either a failed king or a candidate for kingship whose bid did not succeed. So if he was a king, why would he be richly murdered by his own subjects? The leading theory is that during this period, kings were held responsible for the success of a harvest. During a poor harvest, the king would be richly murdered in an effort to please the goddess of fertility, thus returning fertility to the land. Perhaps Clonny Cavan Man was killed by his own hungry people during a poor harvest, or perhaps he was involved in a plot to become king, which was violently thwarted. Unfortunately, little else is known, and we can only speculate as to what caused his demise. In a final grim indignity, only his upper body survived the encounter with the peat harvesting machine, and the lower half of his body is thought to have been shredded by the machine and used as fuel to heat someone's home. Number 3. The Labria Woman The Labria tar pits are a group of over 100 pools of asphalt located in Los Angeles and hold the remains of countless species of animals from the prehistoric world. Every so often the asphalt would form a deposit thick enough to trap wandering animals, killing them and preserving their bones. This process has continued over thousands of years, and even today the pits are still capable of trapping animals and people, 
and are therefore securely fenced off for safety reasons. However, in 1914 a startling discovery was made. The remains of a woman were pulled from the tar pits, who was estimated to have died around 9,000 years ago. Since then she has become known as the Libria Woman, and is thought to have been both the oldest known Californian and the state's first known murder victim. Analysis of her bones showed that she was most likely around 25 to 30 years old, a mere 4 feet 8 inches tall, and had suffered terrible injuries that caused her death. Her jaw was broken and her skull contained a hole, which was caused by a massive blunt force trauma to the head. These vicious wounds show that she met a violent end and was most likely murdered. One theory is that she was murdered elsewhere, and her body was simply disposed of in the tar pool, as a way of discreetly getting rid of the evidence of her death while others believe that she may have been ceremonially buried in the pool after being killed due to the presence of the bones of a domestic dog which were found near her skeleton. The bones of this ancient woman are not only the subject of mystery, but also controversy. The remains of her skeleton were on display at the George C. Page Museum, but were removed in 2004 due to concerns that the display may offend Native Americans and cause local tribal leaders to call for the murdered woman's bones to be reburied. Instead, the skeleton is locked away in the museum vaults, and the skull that is on display is a cast made from the original. Rather morbidly, the rest of the bones are the remains of another girl, which have been dyed to look old, and femur bones cut with a saw to better match the Libria woman's short height. Number 2. Georgie In 2010, a grisly discovery was made underneath the barracks at the Roman fort of Vindolanda, located just south of Hadrian's Wall in Britain. What archaeologists first thought were the bones of a dog turned out to be the remains of a child aged around 10 years old. The skeleton has since become known as Georgie, as investigators did not want to refer to the remains of the child as it. After closer inspection of the skeleton it was discovered that the most likely cause of death was a massive blow to the head, and the body was then unceremoniously buried naked in a shallow grave underneath the barracks. The position of the bones also suggests that the child's arms may have been tied, and while the cause of death alone indicates murder, perhaps the most damning evidence is the manner and location of burial. Romans had strict customs regarding funeral rites, and the dead needed to be either cremated or buried in areas outside of human habitation. Additionally, concealment of a body was a crime. The burial of Georgie's body violates all of these rules, and indicates that whoever buried the body wanted to hide the child's death. Archaeologists at the site believe that the child was murdered and then quickly buried so as not to arouse suspicion. If foul play was involved, it's unlikely that the murderer would have been able to smuggle the body outside of the fort due to the tight security and sheer number of checkpoints he would have had to pass through. The only option for the murderer would have been to bury the body inside the walls of the fort. Why the child was killed is a complete mystery and the reason for her death can only be theorised. Perhaps the child was just a victim of an accident, which the soldiers wanted to cover up, or maybe Georgie saw or heard something that she was not supposed to. Analysis of the child's tooth enamel added to the mystery when it was discovered that she came from somewhere in the Mediterranean. She was not local, and could therefore have been a slave, or even the child of one of the soldiers at the fort. Although the exact circumstances of the child's death remain unknown, what can't be disputed is the complicity of the soldiers who were sleeping in that particular barracks. Eight soldiers from the 4th cohort of Gauls were stationed in that particular room, and with a decaying corpse buried under just a few inches of soil at their feet, surely they would have noticed the smell. If they did, for some reason, they chose to remain silent. Number 1. Cranium 17 30 years ago, researchers found a 430,000-year-old skull at the bottom of a 43-foot vertical shaft in an underground cavern in Spain known as the Pit of Bones. The skull appeared to show evidence of foul play, which would make it the oldest known case of murder, and it predates the emergence of modern humans by over 200,000 years. The surrounding archaeological site contains the remains of several ancient humans and Neanderthals, but the skull that has since become dubbed Cranium 17 is perhaps the most intriguing. Reconstructed from over 52 individual skull fragments over the course of 20 years, Cranium 17 reveals the dark fate which befell its owner. Two large and distinct holes were discovered in the skull above the left eye, and the injuries correspond with receiving two blunt traumas to the head, which would have been fatal. Further analysis of the wounds shows that the fractures were caused by separate blows from the same object, and are therefore likely the result of a determined attack from another person. If this theory was true, it would make this the earliest known case of murder. It's believed that the cavern is an ancient burial site, as the only way in is down the 43-foot vertical shaft. 
The owner of Cranium 17 was already dead when he was cast into the shaft, and the presence of 27 other skeletons suggests that the bodies were thrown into the shaft on purpose, rather than falling down by accident. However, it's unknown whether there would have been any burial ceremony involved, or perhaps even whether the bodies were thrown down the shaft by the killer himself to hide the bodies of his victims. The remarkable discoveries in the Pit of Bones shows that violence and warfare have been part of human life since the first people walked the earth, and that human nature has not changed much over the last 500,000 years. So those are my choices for 5 unsolved ancient murder mysteries. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any ideas for future videos, leave a comment with your idea below and I'll get to work on it. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again on the next video. skull, leg and arm, which had healed over time and not caused his eventual death. It's unlikely that he would have survived such terrible injuries without being cared for by other members of his group, which challenges the belief that Neanderthals were solitary beings. So was the murder of Shenadar III a one-off incident, or was violence between modern humans and Neanderthals a regular occurrence? Unfortunately, the vast timeframes involved make this question nearly impossible to answer. Number 4. Cloney Cavern Man, Shenadar III Shanadar Cave in northern Iraq may be the site of the earliest known case of murder. The cave is famous for its Neanderthal remains, and ten skeletons have been found there, dating as far back as over 50,000 years. The skeleton which has since become known as Shanadar III is thought to have been a male Neanderthal who met an untimely end at some point in his mid-40s. A puncture wound was found on his ninth rib, which is thought to have been deep enough to have collapsed his lung, resulting in his death. After further analysis of the for as long as mankind has existed, murder has been committed. Archaeologists are constantly uncovering the remains of victims whose lives were violently ended far back into prehistory. But just how far back can we go, and is it even possible for a Neanderthal to commit murder as we know it? As much as we like to fool ourselves that we live in more enlightened times, much of the evidence shows that human nature has remained a constant throughout the ages, and here we have five ancient murder mysteries that will likely never be solved. Number 5. Shan may be just an unfortunate misunderstanding. The incident seems to be one of the earliest occurrences of violent death, and also raises the uncomfortable question of whether or not the modern definition of murder would even be applicable when a modern human killed a Neanderthal. Often Neanderthals are portrayed as crude and savage creatures, but the skeletons found in Shanadar Cave seem to challenge this theory. Traces of pollen on the skeleton known as Shanadar IV indicates that Neanderthals may have buried flowers with their dead, and Shanadar I was shown to have extensive damage to his skeleton. The mystery deepened after it was discovered that the wound did not match the type of injury that would normally be caused by the heavy stabbing spears used by Neanderthals at that time. Instead, it was determined that the damage done to the rib was most likely caused by a lightweight throwing spear, which was exactly the kind of weapon favoured by modern humans during that time frame. The evidence seemed to point towards a modern human being being responsible for the murder of Shanadar III. But what could have caused this fatal encounter? Perhaps a territorial dispute?